Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Elevate Your Equity podcast, where investors with a special emphasis on couples begin, continue, and deepen their journey to financial freedom together using the powerful vehicle of real estate investing to do it. Today, we have a pretty interesting, unique show, uh, and we're really excited to be able to share this with you because today it's just going to be Sophie and I having a natural conversation here at our humble abode in Palm Springs, California right now. And the reason we wanted to do this is because we wanted to give you guys an update. It's a little bit as to who we are. We have a lot of fantastic guests who come on the show, but there may be many of you guys out there that want to know a little bit more about us in general. So uh, we want to go ahead and indulge some of those listeners out there with that information and just want to have a conversation about between the two of us with what's happening in our lives uh, and what maybe you guys can take away from what we're doing and take some best practices and then incorporate that into your life. Okay. So that being said, I, I wanted to stop there and see if you wanted to say anything. Yeah. About this. And you know, just because we, we want to take this opportunity to do this simply because a lot of our listeners listen for a while now know that we're a married couple. We do the show mainly for married couples who work at W2, who are looking to get into real estate investing, but we wanted to give you, um, our audience kind of a peek behind the curtains as to why we're doing this how this is inspiring us to live our lives and inspiring us to share this with all of you. So, you know, with that being said, I, I just want to start with the one topic we talk with all of our guests about is vision. So between the two of us, you know, when we first met, we've always talked about our mutual visions together in terms of um, achieving financial freedom geographical freedom and just overall time freedom and what that looked like. So this, you know, we met about 11 years ago 11 now. Years. Yeah. And actually we're coming up on our six, six year, year anniversary, six year me. wedding anniversary uh, next week, actually. So this is always a good time to reflect, see how far we've come, how much we've changed. And just to again, to give you a peek behind the curtains of what our lives are looking like right now. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think some of the major things that have happened to us over the last 365 days have been pretty incredible. Uh, and every day we wake up with gratitude that we're able to experience them both together and individually, because we have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on with COVID, which we're going to get into in a little bit. But over the last 365 days, really, like for me personally, and I'll, I'll see what Sophie has to comment on this, really, we've had the opportunity and just the, the ability to stick, to stay in the flow state, to just kind of go with things as they come. Obviously, you can kind of line your ship up in the direction that you want it to go. But in general, there's going to be some small navigations and adjustments you're going to have to do as you continue down the path. But as long as you point the sail in the right direction, eventually you're going to get to where you need to go and just trust that you're going to be able to make those little adjustments. And so for us, on the business side, on our relationship side, on our career side, it's just been a series of that over the last year. And it's been incredible for us. So for me, I've been taken away that going with the flow and allowing things to happen and just trusting in your own ability to make the right decisions is going to put you in the right place. Obviously, you have to be well informed and you got to be energetic enough to take action on those decisions. But I think if you have those in place and you have the right people around you and you're you're talking and you're being a generally like curious and educated about what it is that you want to do, I think that you're going to end up in the right place. And so that's kind of where it feels like right now, both Sophie and I are at. And that's coming from my perspective. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And again, you know, um, I, I think it's really important to really be transparent and share with you what's been going on, like Derek was saying in the past years. So, you know, for me, when, let me back up a little bit, because in March of 2020, we actually closed and we moved into our new home in Brentwood. And we actually closed on that house. I think our notary came in and she was just like, yeah, you guys are the last house that I'm signing. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's when reality hit, like when we moved into our house, all construction, everything just halted on the rest of our block. And so it was, it just felt like the world overall is shut down, especially in California and the Bay Area where we lived and bought our house. And when that happened, you know, it was almost like a domino effect. There were so many other things consequentially that happened as well. So my place of business, um, I, I work at a 55 and older retirement resort 
And that clubhouse where my office is located, it shut down. And so it really, again, the reality hit where it's like, okay, how are we going to navigate through this? And like Derek was saying, there was a lot of course correcting. We had to do a lot of mind shifts that we had to undergo. And it, there was a lot of unpredictable things that, you know, we, we had to just talk through and have conversations about, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that new, no one knew exactly how this was all going to turn out. This was something that we were just kind of trying to figure out as we go, like a lot of people have been doing in the, in the pandemic and also uh, throughout the rest of their lives and even before the pandemic. So really just kind of sitting back and reflecting on all of this uh, just makes me more grateful again for the, the opportunity to be able to learn and kind of navigate this with Sophie as well. Because it's always better to have a spouse to bounce ideas off of and kind of experience the highs and the lows with. And when we sold, when we purchased the house, uh, we didn't know exactly where we were going to be with this house. Like we bought it because we were kind of tired of paying rent. <laughs> so, uh, so we ended up buying a house. We used, uh, we put a very low down payment in on the house. Uh, it was being built when we, when we sent the earnest money in. Uh, and then when we moved in in March, we started to go in and do everything. We like, you know, we really... I don't want to say staged it, but we put in all of our furniture, we did the backyard, and we spent a lot of time and invested a lot of energy in the house. And we had no idea that l less than a year later, we would be looking to list the mark to list the house on the market, uh, and end up taking our adventure or going on an adventure that would lead us to go all across the state of California and the West Coast of the United States. So um, it's really, really amazing. Uh, what we've done. And just looking back over the last year, it's been kind of a blur, but we're really proud of everything that's happened. So it was, it's unusual that, that we're doing this. I know that my, my family, they, they have, they're kind of scratching their head as to what it is that we're doing and why we're doing, why we're setting ourselves up for so much pain. <laughs> and from, from a, a commoner, you know, a common perspective, it, it does seem like a lot of pain, but really the way that we're looking at is just tiny adjustments in a life that we really want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it just goes to show how quickly our mindset, how quickly life can change and, and what does it take to step into that fully and to be able to ride that wave together. Of course, when we moved into our Brentwood home in Northern California, we thought, okay, this is a, you know, we moved new build, five bedroom, three bath, huge house for our first starter home, our first home that we actually, you know, weren't um, using as an investment strategy. This was just for us to live and to enjoy, right? And so we were planning on staying there at least five years and growing roots. I mean, we even like literally planted six trees, like literally <laughs> setting some roots down and, um, and really allowing ourselves to expand. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your work and and what happened there? Yeah, so there was a lot of interesting things happening at my job. I still, for many of you guys out there, you know that I still work a full time job. And at the time, my, the group that I was working for at my full time position, um, they insisted that when the whole pandemic was over, uh, that we had to return back to the office, knowing that 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 probably was not going to work out for me. That I wanted to seek. Uh, a different type of arrangement. We bought this house knowing that uh, eventually I'm going to find my way into doing some sort of remote work, whether it was with the company I'm with or in a different group or something else. So we kind of like made that decision alongside of the one where we're tired of paying rent, right? We just want to move to a place that's outside. It's cheap. You know, it's cheaper to have a brand new house to live in. So we made that decision and just went for it. That took a lot of help too, because there's a lot of fear that we overcame because like, well, we have a, I have the job that's making all of the, the money to pay the bills. And now I'm putting it at risk by moving into a place that's going to be really hard for me to drive into. So it was, it was really kind of like this, um, this mentality of, well, you know, we, we only have one life to live. I trust myself and the right decisions I'm going to make. And no matter where I work, I'll be able to make sure that we can still survive wherever we are. So Stepping into that, the mindset and working with the full-time thing, working around that uh, to help make it, uh, make it possible is, is what happened. And today, I have a fully remote position at my job, um, which I'm so thankful for every day because they offer us a lot of security in an otherwise very volatile situation that we find ourselves in right now. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, just to kind of circle back, 
where I said my place of business shut down. And so I had to get creative and think, well, how can I continue doing the work that I love in a different capacity? So I took everything virtual. So um, for a lot of our listeners who know, I have a private practice. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I help my patients with hormonal rebalancing, with general lifestyle recommendations, weight loss, things like that. And so you know, again, I really had to stop and think of how I can shift this into a a very sustainable, sustainable way going forward, because a lot of people initially, and I was one of them where, you know, the first thing that you think of when your place of business shuts down is like, okay, I don't have a brick and mortar. How, How can you make this work? And what ended up happening was that a lot of my patients were still it didn't really change their clinical outcomes. Let's just say like we continue to have the same relationships, this, um, conversations, and, you know, I, I could make my recommendations online and patients were thriving during this time. And a lot of them as well, were, you know, I had a lot of new patients reach out saying, because this was again, for all of us, such a deep time of reflection that we wanted to focus on our well being. We wanted to focus on the things that mattered. And I think that's what happened with us too. We, it, it did give us the space. Of course, we had the physical space with our house, but it did give us the mental space to say, okay, let's back up. Let's take into consideration what really matters for both of us going forward. And again, during that year, we finished the 75 hard um, and we deepened our relationship. We took walks every night together. We allowed the non-essential to fall to the wayside and to really focus on the important things that mattered in terms of setting foundation, in terms of setting us up for the life and the vision that we've been wanting for a long time. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a great, a great way to summarize it. In a way, um, because this is Elevate Your Equity podcast, we have elevated or increased our equity in a lot of different areas of our life. You know, the 75 hard, we, we get, we got in the best physical shape that we've been in in a really long time. And also really uh, worked on a relationship there too. So the the relationship equity, we were able to increase that. Uh, we were able to uh, increase our work-life balance equity. Uh, our mindset went up through the roof because we had so much time to be able to focus instead of, you know, driving to and from the office or, you know, the you know, the, the, brick, the and brick and mortar offices, we had that, that time to be able to go spend outside listening to podcasts and on audiobooks and reading. Uh, and so that was really great for us. I know that uh, a lot of people don't have that luxury, but we really feel fortunate and blessed to be able to have that. And so with all of that, also the businesses on both of our sides, like we ended up spending, you know, being more crystal clear on what is it that we, that we wanted because we had all that space. So that really helped magnify some of our growth there in all aspects, in all of our equity, not only just financial, but also on our personal side. And so we were really, really blessed and grateful to have all of that. So one thing that I did want to touch on now is that, as you guys know, right now we're in Palm Springs. And so some of the vision that Sophie and I have had is financial, locational, and time freedom. And we thought that one of the things that after we sold the house, we have, you know, this cash from the house and we had really kind of set ourselves up to be completely digital. And so as long as we have a Wi-Fi connection, including doing this podcast here so that we can interact with all of you guys, we really didn't have any more tethers to any location at all. And it kind of, the light bulb kind of went off, like when Sophie and I were talking one night and we're just like, well, why don't we just, you know, we don't have kids yet. So why don't we just go ahead and start traveling around and, you know, just booking Airbnbs. And, um, then the light bulb went off that we achieved one degree of freedom, which is the locational degree of freedom. And why that's so important to me is that doing something like this is allowing us to take a peek into the life that we are working towards very, like really hard. We're working on our side businesses and, and trying to get ourselves set up on the financial and the time freedom. But right now that just isn't there. You know, we, we still have to be working really hard at my full-time job and at the same time on our side businesses. And Sophie's also in the same spot where she's really, really putting a lot of energy into her business as well. So the time and the investment that we're putting in and the money that we're putting in means that we still don't have the time or the financial freedom yet, but the locational freedom is really, really great to have because now we can spend time around family and friends, especially with COVID ending. And so taking a peek into that abundant life helps bring us into an abundant state that will kind of kickstart our mindset to help 
ask bigger questions, right? And get ourselves further along that path of achieving the other two degrees of, of freedom. So that's kind of where I sit with this. What, what do you think? Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I 100% agree. I think the locational freedom that's opened up, it's, it's really helped to shift balance in our lives overall. I mean, you know, just to give you guys um, an idea, we, again, we've been putting hard, you know, real hard, long work hours, but where, since we're in Palm Springs, we get to go, you know, do a day pass, lay by the pool, get some massages and, and play tennis. I mean, I don't think I've played tennis in about 20 years and it's just been really, just been really expansive to be able to look outside and look at the golf course right out, outside our window right now. And I think what it's done, it's, it's really challenged my preconceived notion of how I should be living my life. So, you know, I, I grew up thinking that, okay, the life that needs to be achieved is the cookie cutter life. Like you go to school, you get your job, you get a really good job, and then you succeed at that. And then you, you know, you have kids, you plant roots. And I think that was the trajectory. That was the road that we we're we're on anyway. But there was something that wasn't like fitting, you know, for me in terms of, um, because we, we have this vision that's unlike other people in the circles that we used to be around before. We thought, is, is it weird that we, <laughs> that we just want to, that we don't want to own our own home, that we, we just want to invest. We want to just live it up. We want to um, maybe take a year off every now and then and start our partial retirement now instead of wait until we're 65. So those are those are the kind of things that we we were talking about and and those were the kind of things that we had to that we ha had to crystallize and get clear on. So again, you know, these being challenged with these unconventional ideas with these alternative ways of living actually fed my soul. It really allowed me to say, hey, like this is something that I really enjoy versus versus suppressing that part of me. And turns out we have, we both have very free spirits and, and just kind of packing up our car. We ended up, you know, selling all the furniture along with the house. Everything we own to this day fits into a 10 by 10 storage unit and, or in our Honda CRV. And we just hit the road. I mean, when we sold our house, to be honest, I didn't even look back. I was just like, thank you so much house for the for the rest, for the space, for the healing, for all of that to occur. Um, but it was time to move on. How about you? Yeah, that was the very well said. I think that, um, you know, there's a time for all things. And this just comes, you know, going back full circle. Uh, it just seemed like the right decision to make. And it wasn't something that was planned, but it just seemed like everything seemed to line up to go in that direction, it seemed to be more in alignment with the people that we've become. And so we've just been, at least for me, I've been learning a lot that abundance comes out of just organic, free-flowing, patient energy. You know, all throughout my life, I've always been so focused on trying to force things and make things happen and, you know, control things so that they can become the outcome that I want it to be. But taking this trip and talking it through with Sophie and kind of like, you know, understanding more, being a little bit more wise about situations just being more mindful and just going with the flow and picking the path that kind of comes to you and making the best of it. That's really the, the way to live an abundant life. And so I think that's, that's about it. That's all I have to say about this. I just wanted to impart to you, the listener, that maybe it might be time for you as well to start thinking about what is the best thing for you? What would be an abundant choice for you to make? What can you do that would interrupt the pattern that you're in right now? What kind of things can you do to start asking these questions and start getting deeper in, into connection to yourself? I would always recommend that people start talking with other individuals or start listening to podcasts and educate yourself, but then you really got to plan on doing it, right? So if you find a big enough why though, the how gets legs mm -hmm. and you'll eventually be able to make it happen. So do some soul searching. And uh, we just really hope that you take this to heart because this life that we're living right now, we're just, just overflowing with abundance and gratitude. And uh, we have no doubt that fantastic things are coming down the pipeline for us. And so we're just here as a part, you know, as, as a, what, what do you call it? As a, um, as a participant in all of this magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and just one more thing to add exactly what Derek said, you know, we, we hope this inspires you to take a step back and to maybe take some time in your day to, to really think about what your soul wants, what you want as, um, as a life fully lived. And also because our show is about elevating your equity, you know, it forced me to think about what does equity mean, right? Like Derek was saying, there's so many different types of equity. There's equity in, um, of course, the real estate investing world, but there's equity in our life equity. There's life equity, love equity, Um, but equity in terms of like, what are we filling our own life equity with, right? Would you agree? I would. I would. That's very well said. And so you got to ask yourself, what equity is important to you? And what do you want to increase? It all comes down to intentionality and trust in yourself and patience. So if you have all of those by surrounding yourselves around the right people and getting yourself into an abundant mind state by doing pattern interrupts every once in a while, challenging yourself, really stepping into the flow of life, I think that that's really something that's worth worth achieving. Yep. And I think with that being said, you know, we will, we plan on doing um, these podcasts together at every location, at every new destination we encounter. And so um, just to keep all of you, our listeners kind of in the know about what's going on in our lives. Um, So with that being said, until next time, and it's been wonderful to share this part of our lives with you guys. That's right. And this is Derek. And this is Sophie. We're signing off. Take care, guys.